Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gaming to come video for those wondering about a graphics card upgrade but don't quite want to cough up the money for an RX 480, then you may well be interested in the RX 460 or the RX 470. AMD have decided to grace us with some official benchmarks which normally I would say take with a pinch of salt but generally speaking they can be relatively accurate when Nvidia, AMD or other such companies release benchmarks so obviously they don't want to completely lie to their customers. Um, and these benchmarks show that the performance of the card is going to be very impressive and the RX 470 in particular may well be a bit of a hidden gem despite the fact that most focus has been placed upon the RX 480. I guess it would make sense to start with the 460 which AMD touts to be the card focused upon eSports. They're pitting it against a fairly well known GPU, the R7 260X. Now you may well remember the 260X as being the part of some rebadges back in the 200 line. These are part of the 260X was Bonaire and was a fairly well respected card for the time. Now what this performance indicates in terms of percentage over Bonaire is around 1.7 to 2 times depending on the game. For those who want that in actual frame rates, you're looking at about 60 FPS with Overwatch, which is pretty damn impressive considering the low cost. Now there is a small little note, that this card features 896 stream processors, so you're looking at around 2 teaflops of compute performance with 2GB of GDDR5 RAM, which is fine for 1080p most likely. Now, interestingly, there were some rumours that the card would actually feature a little more grunt than this. In fact, early reports said that the card would have an additional two CUs, compute units, but that didn't seem to happen, so the early leaks were wrong, or AMD decided for the sake of yields, or because they felt that it was just too much competition for the, I guess you could say, the uh, RX 470, that it would be best to not enable that. Regardless... Considering it has all of the new display ports that, let's say, the 480 does because of the GCN 4.0 architecture, um, which is obviously the latest display ports 1.3 and so on, it's going to be excellent, I imagine, for folks who are doing a lot of streaming, for example, Netflix or whatever. And it could also be really good for individuals who want to, say, put it into a machine and then stream using Steam or what have you. Now, what's really kind of cool about this card as well is the fact that it doesn't require an additional power connector. It's certainly not going to be for folks who want super duper high-end performance gaming, but for the price point of around 99 US dollars, I imagine it's going to have quite a few fans, particularly those who were originally considering upgrading to something along the lines of a GTX 960. I would obviously wait until you get official benchmarks before you start jumping out for joy, but still, it's a very interesting upgrade solution. So what about the bigger brother, the one that sits right in the smack bang in the middle of the Polaris lineup, and that would be the 470. Now this is going to retail at around 150 US dollars and has 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which provides 224 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Now. The clock speeds are ever so slightly reduced to 1206 MHz, though your guess is as good as mine whether you're going to be able to crank those up or not, but it does have fewer stream processors enabled, there's 2048. There are a couple of questions regarding whether you would be able to actually enable the um, 8 gigabytes of memory for GDDR5, I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess that the 480 mod would not work for this simply because there are, is no variant. AMD are not planning an 8 gigabyte uh, 470 um, simply because they don't believe it would work. There would be no sense in it because if they were to do that, the price would have to go up to about 170 US dollars, 160, 170, and it's way too close to the RX 480 in which case, and it just really confuses the market. So what they do want to do is make the what they are considering to be the fastest and cheapest full HD card. This GPU, if AMD are telling us the truth, is going to allow us to play at high settings, not the bleeding edge settings, but high settings at 70 FPS for the most part. Now, your guess is probably accurate right now. You're probably saying to yourself, well, that's certainly not going to be with the likes of TressFX enabled or Hairworks with The Witcher. 
And you're probably right. There are going to have to be certainly con some concessions made. And we'll try to review the card at some point. We're way too busy at the moment to um, for me to commit to that at this moment. And I've got an absolute plethora of stuff to uh, handle right now. The Neo leaks have just occurred. So I'm going to cover some of those today. Um, the GTX 1070 that we're supposed to be reviewing has actually just turned up yesterday late. Uh, that was a whole thing. Um, the RX 480 review, uh, thing that I've done is basically finished. I need to hand all of that over to Amy so that she can edit it. And I've also got the interview with the Kronos guys. They've actually gotten back to me with some of the interview information. Um, they've just been insanely busy because obviously they work at ARM, NVIDIA and various other corporations. And the questions that I've asked are not simple. And on top of that, I've got a whole bunch of other hardware, and there's a lot of other stuff happening in the background of the channel. So unfortunately, if I can get the um, 470 review, I will. But um, I can't promise when that's going to be. So do obviously check out someone's review, even if it's not ours. But I'm quite liking this. I, <clears throat> I think it's good. I think it's good for the marketplace to have a lot of different options. Because... Ultimately, for AMD, it could be that the 470 is the better buy. Um, it depends really how the GTX 1060 turns out. Because it's going to be around $100 price difference between the 470 and the uh, 10 and the 1060. Which, if the early NVIDIA benchmarks are accurate, which puts it at about 10% faster than the RX 480. That's kind of close i mean there is debate whether the 480 is a better option especially because we don't know the custom cooler versions yet for a and for b there's the whole crossfire scenario and for c there is the additional memory but with the 1060 you get faster out of the box probably going to be insanely overclockable it may run a little fa uh, cooler as well we don't know obviously because we don't have it to review yet uh, we probably will be reviewing the 1060 as well um, so there's a whole bunch of different options for folks who want an upgrade right now. Anyway, I'm going to be buggering off because I'm probably going to be crying into the wee hours of the evening if I don't stop, uh, stop talking and start doing some editing. But the usual um, things apply, so if you want more information, do feel free to check uh, the channel regularly by doing the subscribe thing, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, guys. Bye for now.